Okay. Video's on. <laughs> Starting audio. <laughs> Audio's on. Okay, here we go. I'm counting it down. I'm reading the thing. Bring it. It begins in three, two, one. Tonight on TMS PM, what's up, Ferguson? Robin Williams had other stuff he couldn't talk about. Twitter vows to figure out ways to show jerks the door. Godzilla gets a new movie in 2018. Michael Sarah says there's money in the banana stand still. Twitter time and more on this episode of TMS PM. This is the morning stream, but it's not in the morning, it's at night. PM. and welcome to the smooth sounds of the morning stream p.m. edition mm-hmm. good to have mm-hmm. everybody here mm-hmm. it's me and it's humming boy over there brian Ibbett. that's right i'm jamming i'm grooving along to the sweet sweet sounds of tms p.m. Yeah. opening music yeah we don't give uh, andrew allen enough credit for that cool theme no we do not we appreciate that actually we we owe two people for that theme we owe him and we owe rob G- uh, gabers goobers gay G- G- gabers oh, really <laughs> yeah, because he wrote the original theme that we play, you know, the rest of the week. Oh, yeah, right. Which is this. That thing right there. And then, I can't stop it. And this and then, is just the, the jazzified version of yeah, it. Yeah, he took mm-hmm. that, slowed it down, brought it all in, man. Brought it all in. Nice. Brian, I'm having a... Oh, that's a, that's not the right theme. That's okay. We'll just turn that one off, put that one on. Uh, so I got, uh, got, I got a couple of beefs here. Okay. Before we get to the evening Bring news out and, the beef. It's a shorter edition of the show. It always is. By the way, brought to you by patreon.com slash TMS. That's why we have this extra thing. That's right. We got to thank you. Got to thank you, the listener. That's right. If you haven't yet participated in uh, supporting it, go on over there there to the patreon.com slash TMS and pitch in, man, because it's a lot of content for very little money, and uh, we're happy to be doing it. So go over there Oops. and uh, be one of the many. Oh, you got a little ring there. What's What's going on? What, what, what is that? Uh, Woot, Woot is telling me the Woot off is going on right now, and it's telling me that uh, right now you can get a random printed T-shirt two-pack for $9 over there at Woot.com. Wow, two-pack. He two pack. Uh, <laughs> died in Vegas, right? Shot in Vegas? Is that where that that's happened? Right, yes, that's the one. You can get two t- two of his shirts. Remind uh, me, did for... Tupac got shot in Vegas? Where did Biggie get shot? New York. Okay. Somewhere okay. in New York. All right. So it was still kind of a West Coast, East Coast thing. Pretty sure, yeah. yeah. All right. Is that how it went down? I don't know. That's how it went down. Uh, so, a couple things. This yes. Ferguson stuff. You know, we usually on the show, we, we we steer away from too much hardcore controversy or, uh, you know, stuff that's super sad. We're not interested in being really sad here, mm-hmm. you know? There's other places to get, like, the... Sure. The important news, the Diane Sawyer news, yeah. the Brian Williams news. Yeah, and it's not a... Pl- well, those are two places right there. Right there, exactly. It. Yes, we're just not the kind of place who wants to wallow in the misery, uh, you know, or or a real life of real life, <laughs> or I mean, part of the reason the show exists so we can have you know a good time, a respite from all that. But also, right. we're no experts, right? We don't we don't know, and I feel like this situation in Ferguson, Missouri, is more more this way than most things for me, where I feel like a complete noob. Uh, when it comes to what's happening. Clearly, there must be more history to this than than I think. But, you know, sometimes these things start with a shooting. There's a lot of finger pointing. Uh, police misbehaved in a lot of cases. Uh, other people claim that they misbehaved, but maybe they didn't. You know, like it just depends on where, where you're at on the side of the whatever. But then things start happening like there was these reporters with their cameras and their lights up and it's they're they're camped out somewhere just reporting right doing what right. journalists do right here in this country where we supposedly have free free press and whatnot and uh they tear gas and uh, just, uh right. tear gas the reporters the take all their yeah. stuff and then put them in jail now again no expert here <laughs> that feels like a, a coconut thrown too far you know what i mean is that yeah. the old saying? Is that a phrase? No, I just <laughs> made it up. That come from Gilligan's Island? It might. It might Gilligan, have. that's a coconut thrown too far. That's don't, right. Don't, don't, little buddy. So, so you know what I mean, though? You see that and you go, and there's video yeah. of this. It's not like it, someone made it up or, or you know. Yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, this it's is happening. It's getting documented, uh, thankfully, by the other press. Yeah, the other <laughs> right press who happened to see it. Then there's others who've been in jail who are now reporting what happened to them or why they got arrested in the first place. It seems 
crazy to me. Now, now, th now I know that there are always more circumstances involved than people want you to think, either on either side. People always try to melt it down to some bare minimum. It's always more nuanced, always more complicated. That's just the way of everything. So, for example, you know, I've always talked about how the waiter who's slamming your food down and being kind of terrible with his service, mm -hmm. there's probably something else going on there that you don't know. Sure, sure. So you always try to err on the side of, well, I don't know. So let me let me engage or reach for further understanding or whatever. And I'm trying to do that with this, but I keep coming down on the side of the uh, authorities seem to be overreaching in every case. Now, yeah, should exactly. they? somebody said to me, well, what do you do? Or on Twitter, I go, this part with the reporter seems crazy. He goes, is that any less crazy than looting the city? And, blah, blah, blah. and I said, well, this isn't the same. Right. We're not saying that looting the city isn't crazy or that there shouldn't be a reasonable response to that. <laughs> We're saying they you didn't. shouldn't tear gas the press. Exactly. They didn't. They didn't loot the city. I mean, they didn't uh, tear gas the press in response to the city getting looted. They didn't. No. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's uh, obviously. Or, or if they did, there that's more crazy, Brian. You know what I mean? Like right. either way, right. that argument's dumb. So exactly. So it's frustrating to me because I nobody wants to just like one of the responses today was America. I'm like no, 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 no. We oh, don't no. get we don't get to boil it down to that. We don't get to just yell that and have that be the thing that we say. No. When something oh bad is happening, because when something bad is happening, it's complicated, it's messy, and it's it's nuanced and it's granular, and it's not as simple as going, "Well, welcome to America. It's the way things are now." I want to kick you in the nuts when you say that, not you, them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, somebody needs a good crotch punching. It's not no, fair it's, to do that to people, you know? Yeah, and, and every situation, there's so many nuanced levels and things going on that you can't just simplify it, oversimplify it. It's like what we were talking about earlier with simplifying things just based on a group of people right, or right. a race or a sex or anything like that. Now, listen, so, some are going to be crying, hypocrisy, Scott, because sometimes I will make fun of, say, you know, not a, not every Native American says hello and welcome to the casino. No, I realize not. that's not true. We I want to make a very important distinction here. S having a little fun with some with some very surface level stereotypes is not the same as me generalizing about somebody being at fault in a shooting and in riots and in you know the the tear gassing right. of of the press. You know what? And it may also be true the press have been real pushy. Maybe I don't know. I have no mm -hmm. idea. But is that justified? Like, you've got to be able to take a helicopter view of this stuff and come down on to some kind of agreement. And it's not about me picking a side here. Like, I don't want, I don't want either of these sides. Either of these sides right. sounds rough. Right. Like, neither side has a lot of stuff to stand on. But the guys with the guns and the armor and the freaking uh, SWAT equipment Tanks and, and right, uh -huh. used army equipment, they seem like they're they have the upper hand when it comes to power, and therefore should be exercising it very, very carefully, mm -hmm. regardless of how this started, regardless of how it's gone from zero to sixty and how quickly it did. All of those things. What did Spider Man teach us, Brian? If he taught us anything, great power with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you very much. So let's exercise some of that. It's going to try and come up with something about wheat cakes, but couldn't do it. <laughs> Always eat your wheat cakes. That and treat your auntie nice because she's going to be with you a long time. <laughs> That's right. All right. Speaking of swinging the other way, what was I? What was I saying earlier? Oh, Don't oh, date oh. insane redheads with uh, too many teeth in their face. <laughs> yes, that. So I was. What was in the aftermath of or the afterglow or whatever of people being really excited about the new Blizzard uh, release today, World uh, Warlords of Draenor uh, cinematic intro thing, which is always really exciting and always amazing work, and those guys are. Amazing, right? They're doing the this best the work. First time, this is the first time they've ever had an event to announce a cinematic, though. <laughs> well, they usually do it at an event. Like, they did it last year right. at Gamescom, or they do it, you know, they've kind of borrowed somebody else's space to announce it. But you're right. This is the first time they've rented, a, like, a theater and did exactly. the whole thing themselves. Yeah. yeah. It's all very exciting, all very cool and everything. But everybody's complaining, where's the alliance? No alliance. You know, this kind of back and forth. <laughs> and it started reminding me of this thing that Georgia R. R. Martin's been bugged about lately, which is... People are saying to him, there's a big campaign afoot, apparently, saying you need to introduce more gay and lesbian characters in your next two books. And he says, no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to write the books with or without you. I don't need you to tell me what to write. And 
It's a song of ribbons and sparkles. Right. He's already cool with what they're doing with the TV show where they're doing they're having all kinds of liberty with that stuff. Sure. Like they're taking characters that were Renly, absolutely uh, not gay. Renly Bar- was it Renly Bar- Yeah, Renly Baratheon, Baratheon and the yeah. and the flower or whatever his name is, the mm-hmm. Knight of Flowers. Um none of these guys in the books <laughs> Knight of a Thousand Flowers. This stuff doesn't exist <laughs> in the books. And 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 you know, whatever. Like that or hate that, those are the books he's writing. And I will be the first to stand up and go, you don't get to tell him how to write his books. You mm-hmm. can disagree with it. You can even boycott him. You can say it's a problem. But him, it is not his responsibility. Brian, this is the this is the pendulum swinging too far the other way. Because right, I am exactly. all, I am, you know me. I am in on this whole, if you are gay, you should be able to live your life and have the same freedoms I have. And you should be able to get married and you should be able to adopt kids and you should be able to do what you freaking want. That's your business. It's not my business. And I shouldn't tell you how to live, right? That, I am 100% in favor of that. But what I'm not in favor of is swinging so far the other way that we're telling authors how to write their books. Uh, there aren't enough gays in the books. Oh, well, all right. Well, I'm not writing about <laughs> gay people. Well, you should. Well, I don't, I don't want to. Like, he should not be made into some kind of villain because he because he's writing his own books. You know what I mean, Brian? Yeah, if you said yeah. to me, all right, imagine me coming to you. Hey, Brian, <laughs> on Coverville, really, yeah. if you could just get, I need at least one erasure cover every every week. <laughs> I, I know, I you know, why aren't you doing that? You have a responsibility to do that. Why aren't you doing that? You would say, Scott, knock off and go away. I'm not, why would I do that? It's your show. You get to choose. Right. right. You get to choose, just like everyone else gets to choose. It doesn't mean that he's anti-gay. It means he hasn't written about gay characters. He also now, hasn't written a lot from a lot of other perspectives, too, if you want to get nitpicky about it. Now, Zach had Utah in the tadpole says, Renly and Loras were quite obviously gay in the books. No, there was, I wouldn't say they were, I've read the books. I wouldn't say they're obviously gay. There were hints, and that's why they ran with it. Are they ambiguously gay? <laughs> they're the ambiguously gay duo in the book. <laughs> no, there is no there is there is no overt any of that. And specifically, people are not asking for let's write more gay characters. He, they have been asking specifically pointed questions. Put more gay sex in your books. Specifically, oh, really? like dis- if you're going to describe, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't think of their names all of a sudden. Uh, Cersei and uh, freaking uh, uh, Jamie there. Uh, Jamie. If you're going to yeah. describe that thing in detail, give us some detailed gay uh, doing it, doing it in there. And he's saying <laughs> do they, no. Do they get detailed in the books about the uh, about Cersei and a little, uh, Jamie? But less okay. than the mo- the less than the show does. The does show's it turn way into like a romance novel. Yeah, the show is way more. I think more explicit than the books are. But then the he books are her breast heaving <laughs> upon her. But the books are more interpretive, right? So you can interpret them any way you want, and I, I'm not outright dis- disagreeing with with Zach had Utah. There's definitely indications, but if I had read it without the show as a companion, I wouldn't have actually gone to that. I wouldn't have assumed it. And even right. if I did, they're not going. He looked into his eyes and tore off his his thine clothing and threw it on thine floor or any of that. I don't now, know. according, I don't uh, know why he's talking like Shakespeare, but. <laughs> Anyway. Before we before we start telling uh, George to start making the house of of gay joy, right. um, <laughs> the uh, the <laughs> Wikipedia article about uh, characters on Game of Thrones says that uh, Renly Baratheon is p- portrayed by so and so on the TV ap- adaptation. The adaptation openly depicts Renly and Sir Loras Tyrell as lovers, an interaction obliquely addressed in the novels. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. It's very okay. oblique. Okay, of the, the very definition of oblique. But that's the whole point. He chose to write it that way. Somebody yeah. walking in and going, "You know what you should do." Why don't just, it's, it's just as bad as somebody it just saying, needs "To be more gay." It's yeah. just not gay enough for some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, George, why don't you have a gun in your? Why can't there be weapons in your thing that are guns? Can we get a gun? <laughs> just knock it off. Like, let him yeah, write the sure. books he's gonna write. Go find other novels that maybe fit your whatever better. I don't like that's the part where I start going it's it's just as bad as somebody telling someone else how to live their life or saying take say, take some of that gayness out of something like if somebody came to the, the makers of uh, Queer as Folk and said hey I really like the show and it's going real well could you make them a little less gay could you put some more straight characters yeah some in more there? can you put some straight characters in that show you would have a fit gotcha. about that so so you gotta have a, it goes freaking both ways mm-hmm so for all you at home who think I'm a, I'm just rubbing up on the gays all day, 
Here's here's an example of where I <laughs> where it irritates me. I'm really on one today, and I'm afraid I'm going to really say are. something that's gonna, I'm going to regret. Because all day today I've been like stealing. Hell of a soapbox that uh... I've, been, I've been stealing, man. I can't help it. All right, all right. That's all okay. I had to say about that. That's all that. That's that. Let's uh, let's dive into the evening news. Radio today is different. Powerful networks span the nation from coast to coast. Shortwave radio girdles the globe. Oh, it's the news of the evening type. And it's brought to you by Hero Tap, the latest game from InMotion Software, the makers of I Dig It. Give your enemies the finger, the finger of justice. Hero Tap, the finger of justice, is available for free in the iOS App Store. Follow at InMotion Games on Twitter for the latest news and updates. Nicely done. Robin yeah. Williams, mm -hmm. uh, who passed away Monday of a suicide, uh, his wife has revealed today. Mm -hmm. That he had a Parkinson's diagnosis, and this may have contributed to his deciding oh, to kind of check out. Yeah. When when was this diagnosed? I guess. Well, you're reading the news. That one I should just. Yeah, I'll tell you what she said. So Susan yeah. Schneider, that's his current wife, uh, while urging others to seek help for problems they might be facing, Robin Williams' wife uh, Susan on Thursday, that was today, revealed a detail that had been previously kept private. Her husband had been in the very early stages of Parkinson's disease. She said in a statement. It was something Williams was not ready, uh, not ready yet to share publicly, according to her. The actor and comic who took his own life Tuesday at the age of 63 had been brave as he struggled with that diagnosis as well as his depression and anxiety. My guess is those two latter things ramped way up when he found out that he, uh, mm -hmm. he had a, degener a de degenerative disease like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Parkinson's, which is real bad, real rough. Um, you know, that changes... Probably some people's minds about how they feel about him taking his life. I mean, a lot of people, uh, you know, it's funny because there's everyone has their line, right? Like, well, you should never kill yourself. It's the selfish way out. And other people say, well, it's your life. You should get to choose to do it. Like, it's two extremes, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's some middle ground that says some people are like, man, if you're just, you have an illness or you're, it's that bad and you just, what's the point? You're keeping yourself alive to be miserable. Then why shouldn't you have the right to end your own life? Like, there's all these arguments in between. Yeah. I, I'm curious what listeners think. Email us. Yeah, it's so not cut and dry. I mean, even my own opinion of it. It's like I, I was um, on board with uh, um, with uh, Dr. Kevorkian and the you know assisted suicide stuff that he was doing. Yeah. But at, by, on the same token, it's like, all right, is, should that be the – that shouldn't be the first go-to, the first um, response to go to uh, when you're, you're diagnosed with something. Sure. And um, there's so many, there's so much gray area between the the yes and no on that that you can't really just generalify it. General, generalify Gen it. Generalify, general, generalize it. Generalize it. I like Thank that. Generalify yeah. is pretty good. Uh, he was he was my favorite of the Civil War generals. Oh, wasn't General he great, Fye? General Fye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. Ken Burns thing where he's like, <laughs> "I've been out in the weeds for days," and there was a great letter he read. It was fantastic. Yeah, so it was fantastic. Turn the war. Turn the war. Um, <laughs> so I was gonna say that. Um, I, here's what I don't like. See, I'm going to get on a soapbox again, okay? Oh, boy. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I have a very conservative, very... Uh, what's the... What's the? Oh, they just slipped my brain. The, the kind of conservatism where it's like just stay out, totally out of my business. Conservatives, mm -hmm. what are they called? Uh, right. uh, um, uh, libertarian. Okay. He's a hardcore libertarian. That's how he describes himself as. And he is constantly spewing things at me like... Nobody should tell me what to do. I should have full reign over all my choices. I should be able to buy, sell, do whatever I want. I should live wherever I want. I should pay way, way less taxes. In fact, I should pay no taxes and let the market take care of itself, blah, blah, blah. Right? So he's real, real far on that other end. And while there are some basic tenets of that, uh, his stance, I believe, are, are good tenets, a lot of it's kind of extreme, and it seems like throwing a lot of the baby out with the bathwater kind of stuff. Anyway... But on this opinion, or on this suicide thing, he's got that all figured out. He thinks there should be all kinds of trouble and illegality, and everyone should have to pay the price. You, if, you, if, you shoot, if you shoot yourself or kill yourself or hang yourself or whatever, that you're the worst thing ever, and that there should be real repercussions, and it should be unlawful, and blah, blah, blah. Really? So his opinion basically is, let me do whatever I want, unless it's kill myself, in which case then the government can get involved? Yes. And if that doesn't scratch you five ways wrong, I don't know what does. <laughs> it seems I can't it does stand seem, that kind uh, of thing. Yeah. Pick your po pick your deal. It, you either believe everybody should have all the freedoms of the world, or you don't. 
Is it, well, you no, only I believe in the ones I that you think? I don't necessarily. Well, okay, yeah, I, I do agree with with what you're saying there. However, I think that you know uh, you don't have to be to be a libertarian. You don't have to be extreme libertarian to be no, no, any, of course not, of course any, not. Any any um, uh, any side of the issue. You don't have to be the extreme side of the issue. There are there are ways you can say, well, I I do agree with these four things i don't necessarily agree with these other three things oh, that, of course of course and labels are, suck screw labels yeah i right. don't like those anyway everyone tries to label me and i get mad it's like no i'm not one of your mm -hmm. one of your labeled people um yeah i've got all i'm all over the map i think there's good stuff being there's good stuff being eschewed by all sides it's just that none of them seem to want to come to the middle and, co and compromise very much but the point of the, the point of this conversation is or this particular angle on it you they don't have the right to do that but you can do whatever the hell you want to do mm -hmm. right. that woman can't decide what to do with her own body but it you does seem incongruous yeah it really it doesn't just seem it it just totally is <laughs> it is incongruous it's just so oh i just feel like going off today i promise i didn't plan this i really didn't plan to be a a curmudgeonly old the turd show notes and it says in big cap letters and red capital letters next to everything i have some things to say <laughs> I about got, this i got stuff to say Exclamation point, exclamation point, number one, exclamation point. Well, here's one I agree with. Twitter yeah. vows to improve our policies after Robin Williams' daughter was bullied off the network. Here, here. They said terrible things. Yeah. yeah. Internet troll, and I don't just mean they hurt her feelings and these were oh God, not no, they nice. Were saying, they were saying These were threatening, things, yeah. horrible things that if you said this in person, you would be in handcuffs and on your way to jail. Um... Internet trolls bullied Robin Williams' daughter uh, right off of Twitter and Instagram just days after her father's death. A handful of Twitter users sent Zelda Williams messages on Twitter that blamed her for his suicide by hanging as well as pictures of the comedian altered to show bruises around his neck. Lovely. As the Washington Post colleague, it was worse than that. They said way worse than that. Uh, she's age 25, by the way, could not bear the messages that would, uh, that would stay off of Twitter and would stay off Twitter and Instagram for a good long time, maybe forever. She asked her social network followers to petition the company to block two particular accounts, which they did. Um, uh, it says here, Dell Harvey, Twitter's vice president of trust and safety. They have a guy of trust and safety. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great I mean, title. That's a great, uh, VP. Yeah. Trust and safety. Oh, the old TNS. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we will not tolerate abuse of this nature on Twitter, he says. Uh, yeah. We have suspended a number of accounts related to this specific issue for violating our rules, and we are in the process of evaluating how we can further improve our policies to better handle tragic, tragic situations like this. This would include our policies regarding self-harm, private information, and improving support for family members of deceased users. Uh, I think that is all good. I just think when people act criminally, you need to, act, you need to react in a, in a way that is appropriate. Mm -hmm. And if this is an impetus to start doing that better, great. I don't know if you eliminate it entirely. Uh, probably not. But yeah, um, you know, you got people are going to say what they're going to say. But when you are saying things that, I mean, there is a difference between having a freedom of speech online and being a, a you know, saying things that are literally threatening, like threatening mm -hmm. somebody's life, their livelihood. If you're threatening somebody with rape, whatever it is. That's how is that any different than if you're doing it face to face? There is no damn right. difference as far as no, I'm no, concerned. No, definitely not. And I think that um, the mo the more that they can kind of define what those where that line is that you cross and you're you're banned from Twitter, the better off they're going to be because uh, you can't just have it as it's whatever we deem offensive or whatever we deem to be um, uh, slanderous or. Uh, harassment you know yeah. they've got to have some fine lines in there so they can say okay this is the line you just crossed with that and you're done yep and it's got to be there to protect the people who are getting harassed and getting bullied and um, yeah well said i mean you can't protect all corners of the web it's very complicated mm -hmm. and lots of little holes to get into and you know who's gonna they, you want to talk about there i mean there are some dark deep terrible places but at least if we can get a handle on the big mainstream stuff like facebook twitter and you know tumblr or whatever that's mm -hmm. that's a good step forward uh, now on to some much lighter news. Okay, I'm not talking okay. about anything else that's serious. We're done with serious. <laughs> God Zira, the sequel, uh -huh. uh, is now coming into theaters in 2018. Godzilla will return confirmed. to movie screens. Yep, confirmed. With a sequel to be released June 18th, uh, 2018, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures announced Thursday. Gareth Edwards, who directed this year's uh, Godzilla starring Brian Cranston, will return to direct the sequel as well. He's uh, busy with a Star Wars movie right now. Mm -hmm. The uh, offshoot. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. 
Godzilla, we'll that first. <laughs> Godzilla hit uh, May 16th this year, set a record for 2014, earning $38.5 million in opening night. Film went on to earn $93.2 million in that opening weekend here in the States and has since done really well here and overseas. Cool. Uh, so that's good news. Yeah, I'm not going to complain. You about liked, a, you liked the first one, right? You liked I did it? enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, that was good. There are less things, there are worse things to see in a movie theater than that. Far worse things that you can even currently see in a movie theater. Did you ever see that the cancer teenager story movie thing that was on? Uh, the Fault in Our Stars? Yeah, did you ever see that? No. Uh, while uh, while George and I were seeing Guardians of the Galaxy. No, I take that back. While George and I were seeing Planet of the Apes, mm. uh, our wives were seeing Fault in Our Stars. And judging by the the red eyes and the tears and everything, yeah. I think I think George and I had a much better time. You probably did, yeah. Did. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I want to see it, but I want to see yeah. it at home. Where I can snuggle sure. up with a pillow when I'm done. Yeah. Oh. Because you know that movie's made to make you cry. Sure. Exactly. Um, even though a <laughs> freaking Groot made me cry, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Michael Sarah has released an, an album. Were you aware of this, Music Man? Oh, I'm, I'm coming out with an album. Oh, and uh, uh, did, you are you do, thinking you're going to buy it? Uh, you're doing a Michael Sarah impression. <laughs> That's amazing. Holy crap. I wouldn't even try that one. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I need I need what I need is scripty kind of stuff for that because it's too it's too easy just to go. Oh, uh, well, I, I could come out with an album. You know, it's you need I need uh, <laughs> I need something written for me. I think it's pretty good. I think you did all right there. Um, he has an album. He's no Beyonce. This article says this is CNN. Yeah. Well. There's a big surprise. <laughs> yep. uh, but Michael Sarah can still pull off a surprise album release. The Arrested Development star released an 18-track album titled True That. I don't like that title. No. Which features... It's like coming out with an album five years from now called Cray Cray. Yeah, Cray Cray. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. That's not... My tubular tunes. Ugh, that's worse. That's worse. Yeah. For kids who don't know, tubular was a big deal in the 80s. Yeah, people... people uh, that tubular. Was, that meant good tubular man uh dad was gnarly yeah gnar dad was gnarly <laughs> i like gnarly i still do gnarly occasionally actually i kind of do gnarly yeah. yeah it's all right uh the features instrumental compositions and some vocal work sarah uh is no novice when it comes to music he sang backup vocals and played uh some of uh some stuff on a weezer track and jammed with the indie rock group mystery or sorry mr heavenly i don't know who that is no i don't either i know weezer don't know yeah. mr heavenly no never heard of mr heavenly he was uh, he was the one on <laughs> he what were those guys what were the, the the freaking boon not Boondock Saints uh freaking the Tarantino movie yeah Reservoir Dogs Reservoir Dogs weren't they all names like that like Mr Pink and Mr, Mr. Pink Mr Blue oh they were yes. colors right they were colors no, Mr, Mr. Brown. Mr Heavenly was not in there Mr Blonde yeah yeah Mr Blonde was not blonde that was the funny thing about him well sure he cut ears off and stuff. <laughs> The Daily Beast called it a mix of instrumental tracks, lovely ballads, and solemn covers. Oh, covers. Oh, covers. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, compares perhaps tongue-in-cheek oh, his project I to Beyonce's surprise album. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, hello, hello, hallelujah. No, he does... Um, is it any good? He does a cover... Uh, what is it here? We've got... Uh, YouTube. I actually got them right here. True. I don't that. recognize any of the names of these. So it's, it's him doing covers of... Um, uh, stuff that people probably don't know unless they're like super indie. Because <laughs> I'm looking at some of these titles. Um, well, maybe Old Grey Whistle? I don't know. Well, here's something called True That. It's a picture of Michael Cera, but it's not real. Yeah, this isn't it. Oh, here, if you want to play it, here's a link in uh, Skype. All right. You can play any of these songs right here. Oh, do okay. Oh, right here on Bandcamp. Mm hmm. This one time at Bandcamp, I found a Michael Sarah album. Here it is. <laughs> here's an here's uh oh trouble. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna agree. There's trouble there. Mm -hmm. Oof. Okay, we're gonna try a different one. Moving in. I'm dying this fucking. Country. Whoa, gosh, dang oh, it! Freaking, there's well. langu language in there. <laughs> Michael Sarah, come what on, are you buddy. Doing? Jeez, George Michael. All right, clay pigeons. That's all right. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Okay. I'm going down to the railway station, going to get a ticket to ride. This is all right. Yeah, it's all right. Very um, Simon and Garfunkel. 
Yeah, right. A little folky. Any what? I don't know what of any of these is a, uh, a cover. I can't. The no. one you just played is a Blaze Foley cover. Oh, is apparently. it? Apparently. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, but, you're right. Blaze. But I can't tell any of these other ones. And okay, apparently, there's eleven originals and uh, seven covers from what something was saying. Okay. Uh, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. Reckon, didn't recognize any of these other here's ones. One more. We'll see if this is. Wow. You know what? It's pretty hipstery. <laughs> yes. That's fine if you're into that, I guess. Good luck right. to you, everyone. Right. Enjoy. Uh, that's it. That's your news. We're going to take a break. When we come back, your Twitter questions in a segment we call Twitter Time. But Brian's going to play us something now instead. What What the hell I is am. it? I am going to play, and I need to pull it up here because I didn't have it ready. There it is right there. Um, all right. <clears throat> Evan from Yorba Linda, California says, mm -hmm. It'll be my fiance Jane and my 10-year anniversary on the 17th, which is, uh, what, Sunday? Yep. I wanted to request this song for her because she's the love of my life and taking a chance on this nerd. Thank you, Scott and Brian, for all you do. It really means a lot. Shake a snow globe. And uh, he requested a cover of I Melt With You by Modern English. I've got a ton of covers of I Melt With You by Modern English. Mm. And probably popular the most song. famous one. Mm. It is It is a popular song. Probably the most famous one is Bowling for Soup. Yeah. And I'm not going to play that one because I have a little complaint about them changing the lyrics uh, from making love to you was never second best to something like hanging out with you was never second best. What? Yeah. Why did they it's do that? Like, I don't know. Because, you know. That's annoying. It is annoying. It's like Ed Sullivan in the doors and, and Saturday Night Live and Elvis Costello saying, here, could you change these lyrics for us, oh, please? I forgot about that Doors thing. That was in that yeah. movie. I forgot about yes. that. Yeah. Girl, we couldn't get much better or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and, was, and they didn't want the drug reference of higher or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to go with another version right here. Uh, this is great. This I really, really like. And I'm, uh, I probably would have picked it even if somebody said, I want the Bowling for Soup cover. Mm. This is by a group called Girl Named T. And it's from a 2012 album called Wait by the Rabbit Hole. This um, There's parts in the song where she sounds a little bit like Chrissy Hine from The, from the Pretenders. Yeah. But I love it. I love it. I just uh, absolutely love it. Right. It's I'm Out With You, originally, be, originally by Modern English, covered here by Girl Named T. Back in a moment. Stay tuned.
That was really great. Mm hmm. I want that. I want That's more sweet. of that. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Does she have more? She does have more. I want more. All right. I desire more. Oh, I'll work on that for you. Can you get me more? <laughs> Please get me more. I'll see what I can do by getting you some more. Brian, get me some more. Get my more. I desire get my more. My more. My, 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 my. Okay. There's that. Um, hey, look at this. And you can always follow me on Twitter. The newest tweets. Want to go bird hunting this weekend? Sure, why not? Let's do some uh, Let's do some Twitter time. We do this on cool. uh, Thursday's edition of the TMS PM. It's the only time we do it in the week. And uh, all week long, you submit questions, and we've got answers. It's using the hashtag uh, TMS questions, and you can do it any time. Don't even have to follow us. That. Yeah. You don't have to follow us. You just do it. Well, why wouldn't they want to, though? They'd want to follow us. Right? Right. We're funny. We're uh, likable. We are. We're pretty likable, I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. I mean, we're not when I'm making fun of Buddhist people, obviously. <laughs> All right. Joey says, this is Whoa. not Joey image. It's different Joey. Whoa. Yeah, we give him a well. This is well. <laughs> if you had to quit your jobs and forced uh, to be in a WoW profession, World of Warcraft profession, mm. which would it be and why? So like you start skinning or leather working yeah. or mining. Um, <clears throat> I would do alchemy, man. That's fun. That's some fun business. You like doing that? You like Mixing combining the regions and, and uh, making stuff? Right, and transmutating. Mm. Transmutating some. I transmutated some uh, ghost iron into trillium bars today yeah. for a um, quest. And all you had to do is stand in town and have your hands grind together like it looked like you were doing something. So. <laughs> exactly. Because that's how I'm going to answer this. I'm assuming it works just the same. Sure. So skinning for me, I just kill animals and skin them and they just disappear. There's no blood. There's no mess. <laughs> there's no, exactly. The whole a, rest, you use every part of the animal. <laughs> I do. I use the whole buffalo. And I have right. stacks of leather in my in my back pocket that just take up no space. It's going to be fantastic. Right. So it'd I would be, be hard, a leather it'd worker. It would be hard not to want to do engineering, though, because you come up with some pretty cool stuff with engineering. Well, engineering's you know, it's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah. The Great Flea 143 says... Mm. Have you ever noticed Scott loves the word wiener? <laughs> have you noticed that? I have noticed that, yeah. I like the word wiener. Um, sure. It makes me laugh. I think it's funny. So, you know, today I did a fart video yeah. on uh, the, uh, this World of Warcraft deal, right? Uh -huh. And I just couldn't help it. It was just funny to me. And it made my kids laugh, and that's all <laughs> I'm really here for. So exactly. I put it up, and immediately somebody on some uppity dude on, on uh, YouTube says, You really aren't growing up, are you? Like, all right, you, you, you freaking well, you sure boring being, loser. Are you, are you sure he was being... Uh, Let me read it to you. Combative? Okay. Because I'm, you know how I am today. I'm feeling, I'm feeling yes, a little saucy. Yes, you could be reading into it today. You might it's be entirely possible. Edge. Totally possible. I will admit that's true. But when you hear this... So here's... here's you can actually hear the farting. So listen to this. Takes the cup. I will take the cup. All right. Dream. Hell's dream. <laughs> And then he makes a face. Claim your destiny. All right. Go you down. will all be conquerors. <laughs> the point is it's all timed with faces and, you know. Expressions. Yeah. Right yeah. So you're laughing. You know. You know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. The guy wrote in and says, you need help. Uh, ever made it out of primary school, he says. That's pretty sarcastic. So I went, nope. Still love a good fart joke. I assume you're all mature and stuff now, I said to him. <laughs> um, whatever have some fun with your life exactly. it's so boring uh, um, yeah I like the word wiener for the same reason yeah, it makes me it's laugh it's a funny word I mean it's so much funnier than penis or, or schlong or yeah or any wang. of those or yeah, wang yeah those are all so I don't know those feel gritty and yeah, cheap like, uh, but wiener's funny it's like oh that guy's it's... wiener was hanging out that's funny exactly yeah wiener Can't, don't know don't know why I just know it is Jonathan Derrick Good said Guardians of the Galaxy or the Avengers and why so you got to mm. pick, Brian. Pick. Ooh. I know. Um, I, know. I, I, I love Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, uh, Avengers, for me, has the potential of, of bringing in so many additional characters that it would just be a fanboy's dream. You including know I mean? Guardians, man. You including know? Guardians. You could, well, you could throw either one into the other's movie, but, you know, your Guardians of the Galaxy, okay, admittedly, None of the five members of the Guardians of the Galaxy were the original members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Only right. Yondu yeah. 
in the movie was one of the original members. Yeah, okay. But um, I feel like you've got potential for, I mean, God, for Pete's sake, there's so many Wolverine, Spider-Man. Well, yeah. you'll never see them in an Avengers <laughs> movie. But uh, <laughs> but I think you can extend this to the comics. You know, you could say right, well, exactly. which which has the richer uh, potential. And I still right. I think you go Avengers every yeah, time. Captain Marvel and yeah. Century and uh, uh, there's so much growth. And um, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy, and I can't wait to see it again. But uh, um, for me, Avengers, only well, slightly. What Brian said, I totally agree with. That's cool. how I go. There you go. Uh, that's, that's how I know that I've either answered too long or I've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Johnny Pritchard asks, why don't you have more gays in your cartoons? <laughs> Did you really? I think he knows. I, I think he heard my rant. <laughs> Um, but he has another question. That's this one's a real one. Your voice has permanently changed. You have a choice between Echo or Robot. Which do you choose? Well, I go Robot, dude. I don't want to. I don't so, want to Echo all the time. So basically, you're. Uh... <laughs> I want to walk so around going, going, I like... believe we shall. I mean, I, I don't know what he means by Robot, but I would totally go Echo. I mean, you know, like this Echo. I could just walk around. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Would that oh, be the you the whole time. Great. That'd be me the whole time. Okay. Well, what? Okay, we're gonna do. Let's see. Cool robot voice. We're going to just do a quick check and see if I can find something. Because I like a good modulated robot voice. Right. So how about this one? Here we go. We'll see if there's any good. Hello, I'm Mike Russell no. from Music Red no. Voice. No. How do you edition 3.0? How can I help you? I to be honest, it's not very creative. Hold on, hold on. Paste it and raise the pitch. Okay, here we go. Use the raise pitch preset. Okay, thank you. Then start a new wave. Okay, play it. And paste that. Okay. Effects. Okay, play it. Lower pitch. Okay, You'll play see it. them. Okay, play it. The one. What are you doing, buddy? Pull them. Just do it, you'll find me. Oh, there you go. Voice. I am a robot. How can I help you? Yeah, that's a little more like now I'm gonna murder like everyone, you know. <laughs> but like a slightly modulated Star Wars right. voice, like the robot right. that's fixing his hand, or oh yeah, uh, or when they when they've got. Oh, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Some How recent. many languages do you speak? <laughs> the, you know what? I know the Peter Dinklage modulation that's in the Destiny beta or the Destiny game. I would want that. Mm, I've heard of that. Humanistic, but still kind of like garbly and cool. Yeah, you'll have to. Like, you'll uh, get Gladys. Kind of. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ish. Mm -hmm. All yeah, right. I want that. Okay. If I'm, you know, if they're giving me what I want, I'll take that. All right. Here you go. Um, do do bad hair pieces take you out of a movie? I.e., Cranston and his Godzilla role with that bad hair piece. Um, Are we sure that wasn't his hair? I was I was gonna say I I didn't realize it was a hair piece, so that one obviously didn't. I'm trying to think of an example of one that did. Um, I can't think of one. Like what movie? No, I mean like, even I, uh, Jason Statham had a lot of hair in a movie I saw once. It kind of weirded me out, but that was mm -hmm. that's just because I know he's bald. It wasn't like a bad hair piece. It just I knew that the it would be like you suddenly having hair, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "Whoa, what?" But if Where'd I didn't know from? you, it'd be fine. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Is there another movie where it's just so obvious and stands out? I'm sure somebody in the tadpole will. Uh, I'm sure will we saw us. like some film sack thing that was bad. Right, right. Yeah, no. So the answer, I guess, is no. <laughs> I guess the answer is no. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. All right, Josh Fitzgerald says, "Old question from my college days: Brittany or Christina?" <laughs> Which way do you go, what? Brian? What uh, let's what say are we doing earliest form? What are we doing? What are we doing with them? <laughs> are we going to dinner? Am I taking them to this, a movie? Is this F kill Mary? What are we playing? What's what going we... on? Um, let's say you are going to see them perform in their prime, whatever their okay. each of their prime All is. Right. Um, it probably would be Brittany, uh, because I because. All things being equal, if there was a Christina show in Vegas and I had the opportunity to either go to that uh, that Britney show, that Pieces of Me show, or the Christina show, and it was, again, their, the top of their form, their um, their their deal, I would actually, I think I would still go with uh, the Britney show. Okay. Um, I, I think I agree. Yeah. I was watching, never into Aguilera. I don't really care for her. Well, and she's got an amazing voice. I will say that. But she's turned me off so much with her... Uh, her critiques and her compliments on The Voice, the first season, the only season I watched, because every critique, every compliment, everything out of her mouth had more eyes and me's in it than you's. And, and you know, <laughs> like I remember when I had a voice kind of like yours and I, you know, honed it and da da da. Or, 
you know, it's just every every critique, every compliment that she issued in that show had had to be pointed at like four fingers pointed at her yeah. and one pointed at the contestant. <laughs> can't I can't deal with that. Yeah. I don't like that either. I'm I'm in a complete agreement with you. Mm-hmm. And fun early non Right, before ruined before by Hollywood. Britney went crazy. Yeah. Um and I don't blame yeah. her by the way. I no. think it's this environment. Yes, exactly. Patrick that Schmaltz will chew you up and spit, spit you, out. you out the other end. Patrick Schmaltz uh, wrote in his avatar is very hipster. He's got a handlebar mustache and a evil man uh, goatee. He says <laughs> sure. Skittles or M and M's. Ooh, I, it's always a mood thing for me, but I think I think I go Skittles because Skittles I can kind of suck on forever and I don't have to mm-hmm. just eat them. Yeah, Skittles. Uh, yeah, I think Skittles are good. It's Skittles. a rainbow of flavors. Taste, taste the rainbow. Yeah, uh, Travis says. Uh, with all the Skype issues lately, why not use Hangouts? Because Hangouts are rife with issues. Yeah. I hate them. <laughs> it's a mess. That's The Google stuff is a mess right now. They need to they need to tighten that ship up. Right. If Skype is an A-, then Google Hangouts is a C+. Plus. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, okay. Let's see. Here we go. Thomas Chambers says, in order to help people understand creativity, would you donate your brain to science? Well, I don't know that you and I would be the first choice. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right? Would there be? Is there a podcast category? Then sure, we'll donate our brains. Exactly. Yeah. Well, of course, I would. I would totally would. We would really like a brain from a podcast producer, somebody who was around in the early days before uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, before Dave Weiner had his idea for RSS. <laughs> you and I would be good for that. That's fine. And the funny thing yeah. is, I'm already a, I'm a total organ donor. I don't have any superstitions mm-hmm. about that. Take, yeah, take no. my stuff, man. It's not going to exactly. do me any good. If this benefits somebody else. It's all yours. Yep. Take my eyes. Well, they're for not very science. good. You may not need my eyes. My eyes are crap. Sell them for scrap. Nice. Uh, let's see. Guys. What else we got here? Um, what would be your pro wrestling persona slash character, says Juan Nunez. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Uh. I would want to call, I want to be okay I got it. Okay. I want to be called trucker. And I want to look like a big redneck guy <laughs> with like a cowboy hat and chaps right, and a bullet and yep, uh, yep. yep. All right, I yep. like this a lot. I want a little bit of face makeup but just to accent my eyes. I want to look like some kind of terrible like cowboy villain, big fake guns at my side, six shooters. Sure. I want sure. spurs and I want to be called trucker. That's very good. I yeah. like that. What do you want to be? Uh, I'd be uh, a cyborg. So like, you know, oh, some uh, yeah. metallic looking implant things and a laser beam out of one of my eyes. And uh... Great. <laughs> and we could have so much fun. We could be the rivalry too. We could be totally. Because they do that. They'll put trucker together. Trucker versus robot. Yeah, trucker yeah. and robot or trucker and uh, cyborg. cyborg or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm all in on that. Nice. What is your favorite subject in school? Ask Scott Dewar. Mine was art and science. They were kind of equal for me. I liked them both. Yeah, art and um, Spe- uh, sociology for me was... Oh, interesting. Yeah, loved sociology, and I think it really depended on the teacher. Tina and I were talking about this today or uh, last night, yeah. that Tristan's going to be taking a psychology class, and Tina said, oh, I loved my psychology class in high school. Yeah. And I said, you know, I took sociology, and that was, for me, that was the one I connected with, and it... Um, it's really cool kind of looking at what makes people do the things they do and crowds and, and riots and things like that. It's yeah. uh, amazing. I agree. Stuff. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I like that stuff too. We didn't have very good courses or maybe I just didn't have good teachers in that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, teachers make a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Frazier. Mm. <laughs> If, wow. if Iron Man and I, I would say, well, I'm sorry, if Iron Man said, I'm bringing the party to you, Scott and Brian, what would your response be? <laughs> I know what I'd say. I have a thousand things I'd say before yeah. the thing she said, which is here for those unaware. Sure. Uh, here you go. I don't see how that's a party. Okay, that's the official response. <laughs> Mine would be. Sounds great. I'll bring the popcorn. Uh, <laughs> I would have said, uh oh, that's it. Uh-oh. Oh really? That yep. was the, that it's, response is it's better. It's better than this. It's better. I don't see how that's a party. I don't see how that's a party. And part of it is her face. Keep in mind, this is a visual too. Oh yeah. She could have delivered it better, maybe. And I like her. Don't get you know. Sure. Again, let's sure, keep this course. straight. I really like her. I also like that character a lot. 
Um, did you see? Oh, I wish I had that handy. There was somebody made this very, it went viral and I don't know where it went, but, or what to even call it, but it was basically a side by side list of the differences between Marvel and DC right now. Mm -hmm. So funny. Really? Like, oh, I'll have to see the that. DC one is so, like, it's just a series of statements. But they're right. like, it's somebody probably. It's I'm sure it's written by uh, someone who's equally loves both sides, oh, right? And yeah. is very fair and. Oh, of course. Of I'm course. sure there's no <laughs> objective. And <laughs> yeah, no. N yeah, they're objective as you yeah. can get. Why can't I? Hold on. There's a flash media encoder problem. Why is that happening? Close. Exit. I'm bringing. I'm bringing the party to you. Okay, I'll take my top off. <laughs> That's what you prefer. Is that, is that good? Yeah. yeah, I like it. Okay, wait. So DC <laughs> versus Marvel chart I, I don't know what else to call this it's really funny was it on cracked no oh the main difference is I, I don't i i don't know what to i don't know where to find this can somebody find this it's like a it was like two columns maybe or it was like stacked on top of each other and it would be things like we're not sure how we feel yet about a Wonder Woman movie. That might depend on how we do with but 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 very like business so it answer. Videos, like a list kind yeah, of Yeah, it was thing. like a list. Okay. And then the Marvel answer we go, dude, Black Widow's awesome, man. We're gonna put her in this other thing and blah, blah, blah. like point for point, Marvel's like this surfer dude who's so excited <laughs> and not afraid of anything, right? Right. And the other one sounds like somebody's conservative grandfather. Like a uh, committee saying I think she needs to have more red in her uniform. Chat room, I'm looking to you. Oh, oh is this there it, it is right there. there this it is, is right it. There. That's it. Okay, I'm going to read some of these. These are a hoot. Oh, my God, this is long. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll read some of these. Okay, differences between DC and Marvel. Uh, DC, Wonder Woman is too difficult to find a movie audience for. Marvel says, yo, you like Black Widow? Here she is in the next Captain America movie with a ton of screen time and major ass-kicking skills. All in caps. <laughs> DC, we can't allow the lesbians in Batwoman to get married in the comics. Sorry. Marvel. Hey, guess what? We're going to feature a gay wedding on the cover of an X-Men issue. <laughs> DC, the new direction for the storytelling needs to be dark, gritty, mature, and cynical. Marvel. Dude, check it out. Loki goes speed dating. Is that not the best shit ever? <laughs> Isn't this great? This is really it good. It makes me laugh because there is a tonal difference. I'm not saying it's this extreme, but I think there is a tonal difference. Uh, between these two <laughs> it really, companies. It really is. Yeah, there's definitely a... Uh... Uh, oh, here's a good one. DC, right. we can't mention any superhero titles in our movies. That's ridiculous. Marvel goes, F yeah, you want a raccoon voiced by Bradley Cooper with a giant gun? You want Vin Diesel playing a tree? Amy effing Pond playing a sexy bald space pirate? Here you effers go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, this is really funny. Our fan base is mostly white males. I'm sure our focus is new She-Hulk line where she goes to court and saves New York. Uh, Wayne DC says, new female Thor. I didn't. New black Captain America. <laughs> Take all this cool <laughs> shit, Marvel. Be, be a uh, Marvel. Be Audi. Peace. <laughs> That's really funny. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, people should read it. It made me laugh. Well and I think they kind of got the make of it. Yeah. Uh, that's going to do it for your Twitter questions. Thank you guys so much for these. They're Yay. fantastic. There are more to come, and you guys are always putting in great stuff. So uh, keep sending us that hashtag during the week, TMS questions. We'll likely get to them right here on the show every Thursday, uh, TMS PM episode. Okay? All right. Okay. Brian, I want to get the hell out of here. Let's go. Let's be done. Okay. Uh, oh, before we do, uh, patreon.com slash TMS is where you can help keep this fifth episode a week afloat, among many other things. Go support it. Try the coffee level. Try lots of levels. They're all good in there. Mm -hmm. Something for everyone. Can't give much? That's fine. Give a little. Want to give more? That's accepted, too. We'll take whatever you got. Frogpants.com slash TMS is our website. All the kind of things you need to do there are there, so just go there. The morning stream at gmail.com is our email address on Twitter, Morning Stream, Scott Johnson, and Coverville. Did you do a Coverville today? Uh, no, I did one yesterday. Did you do a Coverville yesterday? I did. It was uh, a tribute to Robin Williams, so some covers by Robin Williams. Mm. He does a great cover, excuse me, of Blame Canada that he recorded at the Oscars and then uh, come together by the Beatles. And Oh, I forgot he did that Blame things. Canada thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It was really good. It was really, really good. And then uh, a tribute to, well, not tribute, but cover stories for the Raspberries. You know, that song, uh, Go All the Way. Yeah. Please be go all the way. Yeah. Um, and uh, like a crooner, like lounge crooner right there. Nice. As well as Tanita Tickram and the Partridge family. All of them had birthday connections this week, so it made sense to jam them all into one show. I like it. 
Yeah. Uh, go check it out, Coverville.com. That'll do it. Why don't we play music now? Sounds good. Okay. This, uh, this one was sent in by Pat Foshizzle. Uh-huh. Uh, dear Biorhythmic Input and Synaptic Misfire, Whoa. on August 15th, I'll be celebrating my 25th anniversary of my 25th birthday. See how I did that? Uh, I have a real simple request. There's a song from my youth, and I first heard it on Dr. Demento. Then I heard Scott mention it, and so I figured if anyone can find it, Brian can. The song is an old Weird Al Yankovic song called Yoda. That's all I really want to hear. But if you can't find that, then the star, then the song Star Trekking is an acceptable second. My daughter is making me a custom Jedi costume for my 50th birthday. If it's done, I will post a pic. Don't lick the Cleo, yo. Wait, is this Star uh, Trekking? Is that the one they're referring yeah, to? Okay. Yeah, I so, yes. Got it. And uh, the, the bottom of his email says, sent from my awesome iPhone 4GS. Ha ha! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love that. That's great. Uh, so there's there's no reason to play a cover on this one. Let's go ahead and do the original. It's not a cover. It's a parody, but it is uh, so damn good. And, and for those who don't know... Um, the kink song Lola, you owe it to yourself to check that one out as well. I mean, I know a lot of times when you hear uh, Weird Al Yankovic, you're not sure if you're not familiar with the original, you're not sure if it's an original by him or a parody. Right. Lola by the Kinks is such a classic song, and really, it was it was the perfect song that straddled the line of the censors and got away with singing a song about a transvestite on. Um, on regular radio without any problems because there's one questionable line, um, you know, something like, I know what I am, and I, I, let's see. Uh, da, 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 I know what I am, and I'm glad I'm a man, and so is Lola. Mm-hmm. And you don't know if Lola's also glad you're a man or if Lola is also glad that she's a man as well. <laughs> it's so well done. Anyway, uh, Yoda by Weird Al Yankovic. You can find this on his Greatest Hits Volume 2 album from 1999 and it's worth hearing it all right it's yoda we'll be back on monday see everybody then
This podcast is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. In the Utah. In the Utah. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. I haven't heard that song since my Demento days. I think. <laughs> no, same here. Been a long time. Utah. It's just sound. I mean, it's, the only thing that jumped out at me is that I'll be doing these movies till the end of time. Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't really. Uh, <laughs> it got a prophetic there, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Crazy. Uh, it's so weird to hear that tonight on T. Uh, good job, everybody. Especially you, Brian. <laughs>